Okay. Well, I guess we now know. And I am... Well, surprised would be the right word. So here we are. Today I'm showing you my secret project. This is what I've been working on. This is a home theater that I've designed from scratch and I'm still working on it. But you might have figured that anyway, if you've been watching the videos, I've already designed some pretty awesome Audience 212 speakers, some Cinema 10s, the Cinema 6, and even this MX-15. All of these were designed around home theater. And today we're going to be focusing on the subwoofer, the MX-15-22, because I want to get the best sound out of that in this room. The only way to do that is with DSP. Today, we're going to take a look at the APA-1200 DSP, just by Dayton Audio. Let's take a look at this. Now this is the Dayton Audio APA-1200 DSP. This is an amplifier that's actually a two-channel amplifier that can power either your main speakers all the way down to a two-ohm load, or it can be bridged and power one single subwoofer. Now that's up to 1150 watts. Now, a really neat thing happens when we put this in bridge mode. When we do, we can auto DSP the subwoofer to, well, make it sound the best that it can inside the room. At least that's what it's designed to do. But the real question is, does it work? Well, that's what we're gonna check out today. We're gonna go ahead and test that out. See just how good this does at that auto DSP function. But before we do that, let's take a look at the amplifier itself. Let's first take a look at the back of this amplifier. Now this amplifier is designed like a professional amplifier in the essence that you can mount this in a rack mount system if you want to. On the back of this, you are gonna see your speaker terminals, which are pretty nice five-way binding posts. On those binding posts, you can hook those up like regular speakers if you want to, or you can use the two positives and put it into a bridge mode. That's how you're gonna use the auto DSP. Now, in order to use that auto DSP, you need to have a microphone. And on the other side of that amplifier, you're gonna see the microphone in. And when you wanna do that auto DSP function, you're gonna plug it into that microphone input, which is all the way on the other side. Now next to that also has some power options and it has an ethernet port. The cool thing about this ethernet port is you can plug this up to your ethernet or your internet and you can go ahead and go to any computer on your network and control this amplifier. It's actually pretty cool and one of the features that I really love about this. In fact, that interface is phenomenal. You can set your high pass, you can set your low pass, you can do pretty much anything. We're gonna talk a little bit more about that in just a minute. Before we do that, let's look at a couple more of the inputs. It does have XLR inputs for those that are using balance connections, and it has RCA. Now the other great thing about this too, is it has a little slider right next to those that tells you what voltage you should be using if you're using RCA or XLR. Now you might not realize why this is a big deal, but if you've used a professional amplifier to power a subwoofer before, you'll know that the RCA output on your receiver is typically fairly low voltage, meaning the voltage that the PA amplifier thinks it's getting is significantly higher than what it is actually receiving. And because of that, you often need to buy something like the Art Clean Box Pro. And when you buy the Art Clean Box Pro, you can hook this up and it increases that voltage on your RCA so that you can get the full power out of your amplifier. And this amplifier already has something like that built in, which makes it a tremendous value. And it's just nice not having to hook up another piece of equipment. Now, when we flip this around, you are gonna see a pretty big toggle adjustment switch, whatever you want to call it. It's basically a big circular button that you can twist and turn to get to your adjustments and press the buttons. And of course it has your LCD screen on the front, which is going to give you all the information that you need if you want to toggle through that or just look at what setting it's set at. Here's the deal. There's two different ways to actually set up this unit when you are going to want to set this up when you get it. You're going to set it up either manually from the front of the unit or you're gonna be setting it up with the UI from the internet. I prefer the UI from the internet. So I went ahead and hooked mine up to my internet and I navigated to the UI. Now the very first thing that I did is I set this up into bridge mode. You can set it up into whether it's a bridge mode or a stereo mode from there. Now the other thing I wanted to set up was my high pass and low pass. And it's really important that you do this, especially if you're gonna auto DSP. The auto DSP, when you go to do that, will tell you in advance, set up your high pass and low pass. This is a good time to talk about the high pass and low pass. The high pass can be set all the way down to 16 hertz, which is significantly better than a lot of amplifiers. A lot of amplifiers set at 20 hertz as the bare minimum. They're also typically gonna be second order. This one we can actually set up to third order, meaning that we can make that an even steeper down curve, hopefully protecting your driver from over excursion. Now that the high pass is set up, you also wanna set up the low pass. The low pass, once again, can go up to 30 hertz, 
And typically for a subwoofer, we're gonna be setting that between 80 and 120 hertz, although you can really set that wherever you want. Now for this demonstration purposes, I'm gonna set it at 120 hertz, and once again, a third order. And this prevents really voices hopefully from coming out of that subwoofer, which well, no one really likes to hear anyway. Now you do have other settings in here, such as the limiter, and you even have a parametric EQ which you can also adjust your frequency response here and that's going to be really important if you're going to be using these for tower speakers. Now in this video I really want to just test the auto DSP for a subwoofer. I think that's really what this amplifier is mainly going to be used for. And so I went ahead and hooked up my subwoofer. Now I'm going to go ahead and test it out with the Omni mic and see what the response is well before the DSP. And then we're going to test it and see what the response is after the DSP, we're gonna see if it did make a difference in sound. Let's go ahead and take a look at the measurement and zoom in on it. This is the measurement we just took with the Omni mic that's showing us how the subwoofer is playing within the room. Ideally, this would be a flat response. In fact, when we designed this, we designed it around an anechoically flat response, although you're seeing that we're not getting that at all. And that's because as soon as we put a subwoofer in a room, that room really does have some major interactions with this, so much so that we are no longer getting a flat response. We are getting what looks to be a 21 decibel swing. The high point is around 20 some hertz at 105 decibels, and the low point is around 84 decibels. That is not at all what we're going for. We want something very flat. This type of subwoofer in this room is going to really accentuate some bass and not accentuate other. Now this type of measurement is typical for really any subwoofer inside a room. It's just going to interact with that room and you're not going to get a flat response. In order to get a flat response, we really need to DSP this. Now this particular amplifier, the APA 1200 DSP, says that it will auto DSP with the supplied microphone. I just have to take five measurements around the main listening position or around the room, however you wanna do this, and it will average those and do a parametric EQ to flatten out that response. The question is, did it work? We're gonna go ahead and open up OmniMic again and take a look at the before measurement and add the after measurement as well. All right, now I gotta be honest, that, well, it really surprised me. I, I was really shocked at the results, and here's the reason why. When I first looked inside that program, I saw the five parametric EQs, and that's all I saw. And I think that's all it's really doing, because that's all it shows the program doing. And the result was pretty phenomenal. Once we hooked up this on it, and we did the auto DSP, it's pretty much plus or minus two and a half decibels from my listening area. And I gotta be honest, plus or minus two and a half decibels for that was really impressive to me. The other great thing is the uh, correlation between the graph that the Dayton APA 1200 DSP versus what the Omni mic showed was very similar, almost identical really. And for all intents and purposes, it really was identical. So the good thing is you should be able to not have to have a separate microphone for something like this, you can trust the microphone in the measurement that you're getting from the APA 1200 DSP. And that's really important to know that when it shows you that response, that is actually the response that you're getting. All right, now that everything's been DSP'd, I wanted to try this out and see how good it really was. So to do that, what I did is I played a couple movies. Now the first movie up was Live, Die, Repeat. When I played this, that's when I realized that I really liked 20 hertz a little bit more hot than really the flat response that it gave me. Now I was able to open up my laptop and just increase that gain just a little bit until I got it sounding perfect for my room. And that's one of the things I really love about this particular unit is that I can make those adjustments on the fly. So for example, if I'm watching a movie and uh, 
I start bottoming out my subwoofer. So I can quickly go into my laptop and adjust the limiter until that's no longer a problem. That's pretty nice. Now, another thing that I really liked about this was the fan noise. The fan noise was, well, it, it really wasn't an issue at all. It was very quiet. And that's something that I'm really a big fan of because most of the time when you're using one of these types of amplifiers, especially if you're using a professional amplifier, the fans are, well, they can be unbearable because they're not really designed for home use. So oftentimes you need to switch out the fans. You don't have to do anything with this date and I think it's fine just the way it is. Now, as far as actual sound quality, it sounded absolutely fine. There was no issues I had with it. It was dynamic, everything was good. I can't complain about the actual amplification part of this amplifier at all. There are a couple things though that I'm not a huge fan of with this amplifier. For one, to use the auto DSP, it has to be for a subwoofer and it is only for that one single channel that's been bridged. Now you get a total of 1150 watts, which makes it perfect for something like the Dayton Ultimax 18, the Ultimax 15, and of course the MX15, which is what I used, and various other subwoofers. But that means that it's really only good for, well, one subwoofer. You're not gonna be putting multiple subwoofers up. Having said that, there are a couple instances where you could maybe use this to power multiple subwoofers, such as using something like the PA460. That's an 8 ohm subwoofer that's a professional subwoofer, and some people do use that in their theater. Now, if you did wire two of those in parallel, that would give you a 4 ohm load, and you could potentially power those off of this one amplifier. But for the most part, this is really just a one subwoofer amplifier. So if you're a multi-subwoofer person and you like this unit, you're gonna have to get one of these units for every subwoofer that you have, and that can get pretty expensive pretty quick. Other than that, this subwoofer really comes as advertised, and I was really blown away with the results. So I would say that this is a definite buy for someone that really is only gonna utilize one subwoofer in their room, and they want ease of use and the best possible sound. For someone like that, this is absolutely a great buy. Alright guys, this has been the review and testing of the Dayton APA 1200 DSP. Now if you like this video and you want to see more videos like it, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell. That's going to give you instant notification on any videos that I have coming out. And also, make sure to like this video, give it a thumbs up, and comment on it. I want to hear from you. What did you like and what didn't you like? Or what questions do you have still about this unit? Feel free to join us on the forum at Toids DIY Audio for even more discussion. Alright guys, this is Toids DIY Audio, and I'm out.